Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be talking about a new piece of kit that I'm very excited to show off. This is Silhouette Paint from Boris FX. Now, if you've ever wanted a better brush tool in After Effects or maybe some clone stamping, this is really going to knock your socks off. The good people at Boris FX have sent over a license for their new hybrid painting technology. This plugin is perfect for brushing away distracting elements, clone stamping things into a scene, removing blemishes, touching up shots. It's really amazing the level of artistry that being able to paint right on the frame brings to your productions. And you've probably already seen it used in uh, some prestige television with Mandalorians or uh, maybe some big blockbusters with some Avengers in it. This is some real Hollywood level technology that I think you'll enjoy. So let's have a look at what this plugin does, how it works and how you might use it. And if you like what you see and you want to get yourself a license, please use the link in the description. Head over to Boris FX and pick yourself up a copy. Silhouette Paint is a new plugin. Now, plugins you apply to footage right out of your effects and presets area. Just drop it on to any footage. We've got this lovely 4K clip that we're gonna try to do some work on. And all of the work that Silhouette Paint is doing is gonna take place inside the plugin. Now, what's great about this is all of these features, although we're applying this in After Effects, you can also do this in Premiere. You can also do this in Nuke, you can do it in Vegas Pro. It's a real multi-platform tool. So if you're more comfortable, say, in a Premiere environment and you just need to do spot treatments to some footage, all of this is gonna be available to you in there as well. So let's open it on up and see what's going on in here. The first thing it's gonna ask you to do is to save a project. And this is where all of the silhouette data is gonna be stored. Because everything is sort of being offloaded, everything works really fast. It's a very smooth experience. And all of that data can be offloaded outside of After Effects. So here in the interface, all of our brush tools are over here at the side. I'll just run you through some of them. We've got here the uh, paintbrush tool and I don't know, paint on some some spidey lines. You know, maybe she's got some spidey sense going on. Some Instagram worthy rotoscope animation. This is a great app to do that in. Just tab ahead, draw on each frame. All of your brush stroke pen pressure <laughs> will be preserved in here. And it makes that kind of work very simple. We also have uh, your blur and sharpens, those behave as you would expect. But one thing that's really cool about every brush in here is that you can paint right on the frame if you want. Okay, that's fine. You can also selectively choose what channel you want to paint on or paint on the color or the detail. Now this kind of gave me a trip when I first saw it. The idea that I can just blur the detail of an image by separating them out into two different layers. Well, what does that mean? Well. As you saw, we just blurred normally. Well, here's what happens if I just blur the color. Well, that's what happens. And here's what happens if I just blur the detail. So the color value of her cheek remains, but everything else goes away. All that detail is being blurred out. So you can recolor, but leave the texture or retexture and leave the color. I find that to be a little bit magical whenever I try to think about it. Now, if you want to go one up from the blur, we've got the blemish tool, which introduces uh, the ability to change the kind of grain that it's applying. So we're basically blurring and graining and softening uh, the image all at once, a pretty wonderful tool. So if you get your grain dialed in right, this tool can make it seem like blemishes were almost never there. And this is one of those tools that kind of just makes sense when you're doing touch up or beauty work. Now, the real piece de resistance in here, the real star of the show is the clone tool. So if you're familiar with the clone stamp tool in places like Photoshop, then you know that, that with your clone tool, you, you dial in your brush size, your brush softness, generally, generally as soft as possible. And then you pick somewhere to sample from, pick somewhere to paint that on, and then you just start painting things away. Easy enough. But when we start doing that with video, we have to do that like every frame. And well, maybe the information we want uh, isn't available on this frame. Well, don't worry, because we can actually sample from a totally different frame if we want to. So for example, this guy's head's gonna be in the way. Well, we can sample from a time when that guy wasn't even there, which is uh, pretty awesome if you ask me, <laughs> but we can go even deeper by manipulating the source. You can offset, you can scale, you can skew, you can rotate, you can alter the source image in so many ways. And what's even better, because this is video, it keeps rolling along. So as long as you can keep sampling, 
from relevant areas and have that sample also change, we can get this program to literally do most of the painting for us. Here, let me give you an example. So let's say we wanted to paint these little blemishes away. We take our blur tool, we blur out that detail. Maybe we want to blur out this detail up here. Maybe we, maybe we blur some of the detail in the cheek here. We can get as picky as you'd like. Now notice that every brush stroke we put down is being stored here in the history. All these items are just describing each thing that I just did. And they're all grouped under this event. So I'm gonna rename this face retouching. And we can ask Silhouette Paint to redo that process on every frame moving forward. But because her face is moving around, we need to track it on here. But thankfully, Silhouette has a bunch of tracking options for us. I'm just gonna take an X spline and draw that around this area, which coincidentally provides us with some nice little points of contrast that we'll be able to latch onto. So we're gonna draw our shape around here. We're gonna go into the tracking interface and we have access to a point tracker, a planar tracker and the Mocha tracking tool. Love the Mocha tracking tool. If you've seen this channel, you know I'm all, I'm all about that Mocha tracker. So with our spline selected, we can dial in all of our tracking information, all of the data we wanna get from this, and then we just have it track forward. So this may look like a real mishmash of data right now, and it's kind of jagged and all over the place, but check this out. You're actually able to dynamically smooth this data out. You see this path here? Now it starts as a pretty jagged set of data points, but with this little slider that updates in real time, it shows us how smoothed out we can make the track. So with this data, we're gonna go back into the paint, and here's that frame that we painted up before, right? And remember, all of our strokes are all saved right in here. Okay, cool, cool. Well, now we can tell Silhouette Paint, hey, transform transform that paint using that layer information that we just did, and you'd probably wanna name these appropriately, but now I can say, hey, we're gonna do a little match moving, and I'm gonna ask you to go from say, I don't know, uh, just do the work area here that we have selected. I'm just gonna have it, just like we did tracking forward, I'm gonna ask it to just paint forward. You can see it's working, working, each frame applying all of those paint state and then paint strokes that we asked it to do. Basically like recording actions in Photoshop and then running them back, but modifying them each time with the tracking data. So with that all taken care of, when we play it back, it's like it was always there from the beginning. Because every brushstroke is recorded, and because that's a fundamental way that this program works, you can always undo all the way back to the beginning. Or you can just delete things right out of the middle. For example, maybe uh, this stroke here is just one too far. So I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna trash it. And that's gonna affect 125 frames. So because I'm removing it from one, to keep it consistent, we'd have to remove it from all of them. So I go ahead and say rebuild, and it's gonna go ahead and run that process again, now removing that middle step <laughs> that I took out, but all of it is just gonna be dynamically redrawn. This hybrid raster paint system is a little bit mind blowing when I think about what's actually happening under the hood. That's it for an overview. I hope you can see why I'm so excited about this thing. We might get into more specific tutorials about the tools and techniques that we see here. If that's the kind of thing you wanna see more of, let me know in the comments. I'm already working on some light painting, very Instagrammable tutorials coming up. And if you wanna get yourself a license, please use the link in the description, head on over to Boris FX and pick yourself up a copy. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams tutorial channel. If this is the kind of thing that you like to learn, then please subscribe to the channel. We put up tutorials on here about After Effects, motion design, visual effects, and we have a live show that goes on on Fridays. So make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss it. If you end up making something cool with this, and I know you will, I would love to see it. Tag me on Twitter. I'm at EC Abrams on there or tag me on Instagram at EC Abrams on there as well. I'd love to see some before and after breakdowns of shots that you use this on. That'd be so cool. Anyway, that's enough for me. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you around the internet.